are considering today. It says interpersonal skills in the new workplace. The new workplace means that I was an old workplace. And uh, my name is Deborah David. I will be facilitating this program. I've been introduced. And then the discussion outline will follow this pattern. What are we talking about exactly when we say it's a personal skills? Yes, people may think it's a familiar word, in fact, a popular word as well. Anytime you're applying for a job, you probably see it on people's CVs or employers will say uh, interpersonal skills, etc. What has happened is that between the things that we learned in school from our textbooks and what the workplace demands, there is usually a gap. There are many theories that we have learned, but the difference between a good staff and an excellent staff is someone who has been able to deploy those theoretical knowledge into value for the workplace. And when I say workplace, we shouldn't be thinking, oh, after COVID, you should know now that workplace is not just number two, something streets, which is where the building stands. It's more than that. Now, so the new workplace, what has changed? Then when we discuss interpersonal skills, what's the need for me? Why should I listen to this conversation? Today, we also look at what we should do differently going forward now that we are in a new space. And then we'll take your questions. Let me what you do. The interpersonal skills is such a very broad topic. And uh, taking personal responsibility is important in the sphere of life. Because leaving one's life to chance will not give you a chance. So by the time we do this, we will just have introduced it somehow and scratched it on the surface. At the end of this webinar, I will expect that everybody who really do want to know so much about interpersonal skills will have to probably just go again, search, and then read books around the interpersonal skills. So you won't get the whole of the syllabus of interpersonal skills under 20 minutes, but you will be introduced to it. So when we talk about interpersonal skills, it can mean so many things in different kinds. For example, what I mean by that is this. Even if you Google interpersonal skills, you see many definitions for interpersonal skills. You will hear things like, oh, it's a troubleshooting skills. It's a skills, social skills. Some will say interpersonal skills means coping with pressure. Some will say it is a positive approach to criticism. When your work is reviewed or when your activity is considered and you're giving a feedback, interpersonal skills shows you how to respond to that feedback. Some will say interpersonal skills has to do with being a team player. Some will say it is a positive approach to life. Some will say it's empathy. All of these big words. Some will say it's time management skills, how do you manage time? Some will say interpersonal skills means showing self-confidence. Some will say interpersonal skills means being a good listener, listening more than you're talking. Some will say it is a good work etiquette. Some will say it's having excellent verbal communication. Now, if I ask you each of these things that we see here, they themselves are a heavy concept. You will agree that when I ask you, how do you cope with pressure? You know, we can continue that conversation for 30 minutes. And how each individual copes with pressure will be different from person to person. How each individual will handle certain situations will be different under different circumstances, depending on how many people are involved, what exactly is involved, the type of deadline involved, and who is supposed to be the beneficiary of what you are trying to consider. Not to say too much, when I was in MTN, I started doing uh, my nine to five from MTN. When MTN came to Nigeria for the first time, we were one of the very pioneer staff. And there's this lady called Jennifer. You know, we all came in new to the workplace. Majority of us hadn't worked before. But some that had worked before, they hadn't gone too far because of the age bracket and all the criteria defined for those who should be employed. But to cut the long story short, the company was supposed to get a supervisor for that location where I was. I was in Matoli then. And if you are an employer or somebody who wants to choose somebody as a leader, you know, there will be other things apart from they can do the work well. If you have 15, 20 people, you will have to use two, three, four, five things that will differentiate one or two people that will want to stand out. Somehow Jennifer became the supervisor and everybody went, to, hey, what happened? Why? Why not this person? Why not that person? Why not the other person? <laughs> what did she do? She has a way of just asking, how is your family? She had a way of just asking. I hope the lunch was great. You know, someone like me who lost a mother when I was 14, I don't even call 14 when my mother died. So my whole world was to me. I just didn't know how to relate with people. I just went into a different world altogether. I would just stay alone and be comfortable with me. So 
I didn't think it was necessary to ask anybody, have you had lunch? How is that my business? You know, but I learned quickly that some of these extra things, they put you in front of your supervisors, of your reviewers, of those who should promote you, no matter what level you are at your career, whether you're starting in the middle, in the senior executive, if there's any consideration for board or to admit to people in the board and you are both good, they will use other things apart from the technical knowledge you have received or that you have displayed, they will have to use something else. And that thing they will use is interpersonal skills. So today, I will tell you that interpersonal skills is whatever you call it, that can deliver results for you apart from the technical knowledge that you have. Interpersonal skills is timeless. Whether the old work or the new work, whether in this generation or generations past or generations in the future, it's a dividing factor between those who thrive and those who struggle. It is universal. Interpersonal skill is contextual. It, it depends on what, what frame and who are, who are involved. I'll tell you another story. When I was working in KPMG, I was an auditor. And so because KPMG will emphasize first name basis, so you could call anybody 15 years older than you are by first name. So we're doing that and it was okay. So we will go to some of the clients' places. It was comfortable for them. You could call them first name and they will be fine. So I was on this job around a papa to do audits. And every time I go or I went to this lady for anything, we would say I should come back. I will come back, come back. For weeks, I couldn't get my job done. Then later one day, my supervisor now went and then collected exactly the same schedule under five minutes and brought it upstairs. So I wonder, I said, what happened? He said, you don't know, people like that. I want you watch that where she's going for lunch. Then everybody says, ma, ma. Ma, 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 and they kneel down and they do a lot of things for her. And don't you know that if you can't say ma, <laughs> you can't get anything. You know, what does that mean? I couldn't get my job done because I didn't understand the context. At that point, my KPMG exposure of calling everybody by first name didn't work. It didn't work. Therefore, interpersonal skills is contextual. You need to be able to learn your environment, to feel your environment. What works in a particular place may not work in the other place. And since that day, I would just go there. Ah, ma. Yeah, yeah, how is your family? Oh, this is what I actually want. I'm actually, I, I cannot deliver my job. As in, I will just be vulnerable with her. I will just tell her that ah, if, if you don't give me this thing, they will sack me. Oh. You know, so she will now hold it to me as a duty to, pre to preserve my work. You know, so I got my job done. I went to another company. I was able to use it. But you will meet some other people. It didn't just matter to them what you call them. Fine, when they see you as an auditor, they see you as a semi-goddess. They want to give you everything, even without you know asking for more. So those are people for you. And because number four, interpersonal skills will deal with people management, there are no two people that are the same. You would have to be a very good student of people, somebody who study people. And I don't know whether there are courses in the university that will tell you how to study people. Some of them will be intuitive, some of them will come with experience, some of them it will mean that when you hit a particular uh problem and you ask your mentor what can i do about this then they will borrow you wisdom you add it to your bank they'll borrow you another wisdom you add it to your bank as you have people will be easily approached you have people will be difficult for no reason and sometimes it's not your fault they may be having a bad marriage they may be having a wrong you know a bad day they may just have health issues which they have not even told anybody so they themselves have lost concentration for their environment. So if you're asking, they say, mm -hmm, did you say you have to come back and say the same thing again? It's not your fault. <laughs> so you have to understand that it's not your fault, but you would need to be able to maneuver. And that's why if a job starter will advise, don't go to the workplace expecting that it's the same thing that happened in the university that will happen there. There are unspoken rules. There are unwritten culture. They can tell you here we respect individual. It's not always so. <laughs> Sometimes the things you meet, they are completely different from what you expect. So number five thing I would like to tell you about interpersonal skills, in addition to all that you have read or heard before, is that summarily is talking about respect and courtesy. And respect and courtesy happens, you know, are perceived differently by different people. For some people, depending on the culture you come from, some people don't genuflect when they greet. And it's okay. Good morning. And they look you straight in the eye and they're fine and they're okay. But you can get to a level where you are dealing with somebody who really believes in that, maybe based on background or other kind of exposure. So you will have to understand what works for the person. But whatever you call respect, it's your own definition. If you are dealing with people, you need to understand what they think respect is. To be honest with you, 
you need to let them understand what they think respect is. Some people, when you're coming, if you say, please bring your bag, you have shown them respect. As a matter of fact, even if you don't know the job, when promotion comes, they will rather promote you than the other person who is doing well. Why? You are carrying the bag, and that's what they want. And there are some people who say, no, leave my bag, it's my own. What about that? It doesn't matter. So it, there is not a serious uh, demarcation between uh, how you play and how the other person wants it. But most of what happens is you have a middle point where you will meet. You will know what is important with the individual and what does not violate your personal value. Eye service, gossip, all those things. No, you don't need to do that to earn anybody's respect. Just be true to yourself, to thyself be true. And look at what it is that is permissible within proper standard value to give to people of respect. Number 16, I'd like to tell you, in addition to what you already know about your personal skills, is intentionality. Most of the things that happen in the world or in the workplace, no matter the level where you find yourself, whether you're SATA or you're in the middle or you're at the very extreme part of the ladder, you know that interpersonal skills does not just mean lower employee relating to higher employee, not always. It may also be higher employee also knowing how to harness the team, how to be able to make them function effectively, what works for this person, what does not work for the other person. There are some people that are easily distracted. And you know, you see, one of the things that you must put in your mind is that you can't fix people. The person you will fix is you. Every time you try to fix anybody, your spouse, your boss, your subordinate, you will meet frustration. What you will do is, how am I able to navigate the kind of person that this person is? And how am I going to succeed at achieving my purpose legitimately without violating the proper value of integrity and all of those? That's the question you need to ask yourself. So you have to be intentional. You will not expect them to come and be the one to come and meet you or the one to come and deliver the results to you or whatever. Sometimes when you give instruction, maybe you are the boss or the manager or the supervisor, you know, and it appears as if the communication is not clear. Sometimes you will expect that they should come back and get more feedback. Let's not assume that does not happen. As a manager, you have to be intentional. Please confirm that this is what I said. That is when you will be shocked at the way they will relate your own message back to you. You say, no, I didn't say so. So for you to achieve the personal relationship or interpersonal skills, you must put intentionality in front of you. You have to be intentional. You are the one that wants to get the job done. You are the one that wants to get the promotion. Whatever benefit you want to have, you know, playing in this space of interpersonal skills, you are going to have to be intentional about it. Number seven thing I'll add to what you know already is self-awareness. Who are you? What do you stand for? What are your values? What irritates you? What, what gives you energy? There are people that... <laughs> And it doesn't mean that the loudest people are the most excellent people, really. Some of them are just naturally loud. Sometimes they will give you good points that you are going to use. And there are some people that are very quiet. You have to bring them out, you know, by some kind of method for them to deliver value to you. So you have to be sure of what you can cope with and what you can handle. There is no point being an ant and wanting to walk on the floor. The legs are designed for the floor. The hands are designed for the washing. The eyes are designed for seeing. The ears are designed for hearing. And if you combine all of those functions together in a team, they deliver the purpose of movement. So if you are not the hand, don't assume everybody else should be the leg that you have. Why can't this person move and move? Like Some people are quiet and they will achieve it. Some people are smart and they are also very vocal, highly vocal and they will deliver. You know, some people are vocal, but they don't deliver. So you yourself personally, who are you? Do you like it hot and spicy? Do you like it cool and quiet? If you cannot define you, <laughs> you will become lost because then you will be seeing everybody with your own lenses. You want to see everybody quiet and they can't all be quiet. You want to see everybody forward and they can't all be forward. So you have to first define you and define what infuriates you or what gives you energy. If you know what gives you energy, you will be able to partner more with those who boost your energy. And that is how interpersonal skills will help you. The idea is not just to be self-centered, it's to first be self-aware. Who am I? What do I take? What do I tolerate? What can I handle? Who do I avoid? And who do I engage? There are some people that you would better do with them with email if you cannot cope with maybe the way the verbal conversation will go. And then you follow up with phone call. There are some that physically they like it. When you go there, they will even show you on the laptop. This is how to use this function on Excel. This, so you know these are people that you will physically engage and they will deliver value to you. So you should understand what you want out of any relationship, even in the workplace, either to your superior or to your subordinate. Number eight, 
Interpersonal skills is all about relationships, nothing outside relationships. When you say interperson, so you are talking about human beings. We are not talking about computers. If you are somebody like me who like to, in those previous world, just on my own lane, you know, I had to learn it along the line as I began to progress in my career. You know, so it's about relationships and it's not limited to those in your offices alone. If you are dealing with supplier, how do you get the best value? If you are dealing with your customers, what do you do differently to ensure that between you and the next person, you always deliver results? Now, interpersonal skills number nine is something you have to daily practice. It is not something you start now and pick and drop. I'm tired. No, you must be intentional. You must practice it daily. And then you will be able to become, you will be perfect, you will be better. So now the topic before me says interpersonal skills in the new world of work. What has changed? In those days, there are two pictures right here before you. This was the way we used to work before COVID, before we stayed at home, before lockdown. People who look at computer, would share things together, you would participate, you would get information. But to my right here is the new world of work. You can do Zoom meetings for everything else. In fact, if you want to review a document, it can be virtual and remote. Now, when you are now in this new working, what are you supposed to do? First thing you need to know, you are no longer in four walls. And if you are still going to the office fiscally, that's fine. You may have to also understand whether you have to do with the vendor or a customer or your boss who is not in town. You need to now start navigating and begin to renew and readjust your mindset. That the way we used to work before, you cannot put punctuality in your performance appraisal now and say punctual. What is punctual? <laughs> you have to redefine the punctuality. It's no longer 9 to 5 if you are in 7.30, the first person to get in everything. Because now that they are not getting in, the people wake up now, brush their teeth, and they're in front of the computer. So how do you mark punctuality? Really? <laughs> and you need the job to be done. You know, physical mentoring is there where somebody will show you PowerPoint. Oh, you don't know how to use this bulletizing, then they go there and go and do it. So you know, then it is person to person. The new world of work now is remote. You do more of emailing. You do more of virtual. You hear things like electronic. You hear things like machines. So somehow, human beings are talking to people via machine. So and that has placed a lot of challenges with us, I mean, right now. And that's why I think interpersonal skills, it's a very critical topic to continue to explore. That should be version one, version two, version three of this video. So at this point, if you are thinking interpersonal skills is not relevant, or what is the matter, why are we shouting interpersonal skills? I just want to quickly remind us that for you, what you're going to gain is self-confidence. You gain visibility in front of those who should put you forward. By the time they are looking for who to promote, it ceases to be who is serving tea in the office anymore. It ceases to be who is first at the door to say good morning, my good morning, sir. Now that you're not doing that, <laughs> you need to now know how to you know, develop confidence even remotely. And how do you do that? Ensure that you're always asking questions when you're not clear. Don't go and invest three, four days in an assignment that you will still come back and it will appear that you haven't done the right thing. And at the end of the day, if you cannot manage human beings now, your bosses, your superior, or even your subordinates, you know, promotion in itself is something that everybody looks forward to at any point in time. You're in a place, one month, two months, six years, three years, you are looking forward to, okay, so now I'm recognized as a senior person. Now that you are working in your house and your boss is somewhere else, how do you ensure that you can network in a manner that you, you, are, you are visible for promotion? That's what I mean. So interpersonal skills is what you need to continue to build up on. You need now to be able to improve on your writing skills in a way that you are simple, you are clear, you are direct. Interpersonal skills for you, when you begin to learn more on it, we give you opportunity to build your relationships better. You cannot be misunderstood and your career will grow and you will not work under stress and you continue to learn and learn more. Because one thing that doing work does for you is that every time you do something new, you become better at it. For the organization, by the time your interpersonal skills is honed properly, you're going to have improved productivity. You know, people begin to work smarter. Because then the cost is clear. There is no toxic relationship. The fact that you are in one location, the other person is in one location. By the time interpersonal skills has become very, very, very mastered, people deliver results. And at the end of the day, what do you do? The whole, the whole, the whole people, the whole team, the whole company benefits. 
The company benefits from good branding because you're able to deliver to your customers, you're able to keep to your promise of your vendors, you're able to make your shareholders happy, you're able to avoid government coming after you. You are working remotely, yes, but the government is auditing you or you have tax things to do or you have uh, documentation to submit. And by working with people properly and achieving results, you get good branding, your companies begin to move fast, you get your results done. You have your employee loyalty, you have no turnover. When people are happy, they don't want to leave. And then you save costs on recruitment, you save costs on having to replace people too prematurely. Now, why are we having this conversation? Interpersonal skills in the new world of work demands that we learn new and proactive methods of using our strength, of deploying our talent, of making ourselves visible, of doing things in a way that the fact that you are somewhere physically different does not mean that you are missed in the room. Does not mean that when performance appraisal happens, they will say, we don't even know what they are doing. <laughs> so these are just tips that you probably know, you know, before that you have to do more now that we are now working newly in a new world of work where you are not there, you are not there. Nobody sees you when you, when you take water and drink. So now this is about my last slide, I believe. What are we going to be doing differently now that the new world of work has started? Number one, have moderate expectation from people. Because what will happen is for you to think that, oh, let it happen. The days that people work nine to five, they will ensure that if I don't finish this assignment, I don't go. Some of them will even be there till 8 p.m., 9 p.m. to solve the problem. Over time is involved, everything is involved. Now, when you're dealing with people who are in the house and are struggling to explain to their children why they cannot attend to them, but mommy, you are here. Answer my question. <laughs> So you should know that there is a lot of balancing to be done. And so therefore, when you are expecting things from either your superior or your younger people or those who are your subordinates, you will have a moderate expectation. Yes, they will deliver. But if you don't want to be disappointed, it will be the same level. Hopefully that some people will move forward and deliver more. But if your expectation is moderate, it will give you a less you know, apprehensive situation to manage. Number two, now that you are working remotely, now that people are apart, what do we do? You practice the golden rule. And what's the golden rule? Do to others as you have them do to you. If you are the subordinate and you have been asked to produce a document, do something, go somewhere, achieve a result. If you are not able to, normally, if you are the one expecting from somebody on Tuesday afternoon and the person has not come back to you when they say evening, you know you begin to feel, ah, What's the matter? So the meaning is turn the table round. And also, if you are the other person at the other hand, expecting something from someone they have not gotten to you, just step out of your own comfort zone and say, fine, what if I'm the one in the position of difficulty? I don't know what this person is facing. How am I going to make sure that I have enough feedback to ensure that this person is fine and okay? Oh, hello, Lagaja, where are you? And uh, why is this, this not done? Can I have a feedback on where you are on this matter? So whichever way, and because most times it's not the... The people at the peak are not the ones looking for how to come up. So most times we would direct this conversation mostly to people who are still climbing the ladder. So most times when you expect that something should be done and it's not done, you know you will not be happy. So the important thing is for you to be vulnerable with your employer or your boss. If you're having a bad day, you're sick or you're not well, because there's no possibility for them to see that your eyes are red. In the office when you came in, Somebody saw that your eyes are red and they go, Sandra, what happened? He said, I had a headache. I will oh, yeah, go to the hospital. So it's easy. But you are in the house, you have a headache, nobody knows. So you have to speak up. <laughs> you know, you have to speak up. Number three thing I would like to drop with you is that you would need to intentionally become a person of value. Remote working should not take away efficiency. Remote working should not take away effectiveness. Remote working should not take away the fact that you are productive and are delivering results. If you're a person of value, you are the first beneficiary. Because whatever you deliver speaks of you. And anywhere you go, the first introduction to you is what you are doing. This person that is a chartered accountant, this person that is a data say that. So when you're a person of value, you become better. If you leave your workplace today, the best you give to them is your ID card. Every knowledge you gained, every experience you acquired, every skill you developed, all of them together are adding to your person. They become the reason you are better in the next workplace than you were before you started the previous one. So please, let us embrace value. Number four thing I'll leave with us that we can do differently going forward is to become people of 
you know, people that has learner's mindset. Everything keeps changing. Everything keeps changing. Everything keeps changing. Don't expect that, oh, in those days, they used to unfold you and give you this share and give you that. This is the step they go and do. Sometimes some things will be thrown at you. Learn. Go on LinkedIn. Find out who has done it before. Go on Google. Find out who has done it before. So that by the time you are submitting, because it's not a matter of two people sitting around the table and discussing the thing, it's now almost like you working alone. So you have to develop a learner's mindset. You need to be able to ask intentional questions from people who know better and then take it from there. Number 15, I'd like to live with us as you continue in this new world of working is empathy. Empathy does not mean sympathy. Empathy is being able to see through the lens of the other person. It's being able to see, you know, somebody has done something and it's not completely correct, entirely correct. You understand? You first ask the question, but why did you do it this way? By the time you understand the basis and the rationale, it will be easy for you to relate with the person. So, okay, fine, but you can do it better. So empathy becomes much more, you know, important at this season. Number 16, I leave with you, is to do the opposite of what you wish. If you wish somebody should follow up on you, you should be the one to follow up on that person. Hey, Stephanie, and they have not called you. Why not just call? <laughs> so like I said, again, you can't fix anybody. You can only fix you. So seek active and regular feedback. Take personal responsibility for what you're doing. Be open to amendments. Be human, be vulnerable. Let people know if you're not there, you're not feeling good, let them know. You know, know what to engage, know what to avoid. If you know something will waste your time or will waste your energy, either dealing with people or dealing with the assignment, try and quickly make a judgment call between what you want to continue and what you want to put this up to. So you must develop that skill intentionally. What do I engage, what do I avoid? You will also need to be a bit more visible, although not forward, you know, be visible in that if you have done something, positively brag about it. What I mean is, I have just completed X, Y, Z, and this is, these are the methods that I, that I employed, and I got assistance from X, Y, Z, and at the end of the day, this was delivered even before the deadline. If you have all of those records, a time will come that they need to make a judgment about, okay, who is supposed to be taken up to the next level? Because at that time, it's no longer who came to the office first. It is now your work speaking for you. So you must be intentionally visible even with what you're doing. If you are supposed to be at a meeting virtually, show up five minutes before the meeting and log in, be there. And then when you are in a meeting, you know, research the topic if you have the agenda beforehand and make meaningful contributions. Ask intelligent questions. And you can also throw more light into it and say, well, I actually read up something about this concept. It says this, is that what you are trying to achieve? You know, so when you are always, you know, you show that you, your mind is in what you're doing. People begin to notice you differently from when you're in the office and you're going in and out of the office. This, this is no longer what happens anymore. So you have to be visible in another way, but not being forward. So the last thing I'm going to leave with you is I should keep reading. Keep reading about interpersonal skills. Keep reading about your subject matter. Keep reading about the psychology of people. Keep reading about how to navigate the new world of work because it's, it's a thing that is forced on our generation. We found ourselves into it. Now, the generation behind us, they'll be prepared. The children are now doing schools online. I'm sure you are all aware that primary school, secondary school, they now do school online. Somehow they are being prepared for the new setting. But our own generation suddenly just came on us. So read more, listen to healthy conversation about workplaces, what's happening in China, what's happening in America, how are they treating it in Ghana? Because you will discover that the world has become a global village. Your employer will go somewhere and adopt the same thing you read on CNN. So are you ready? Are you prepared? The workplace is for those that are adaptive. It's for those who are relatable. It's for those who can have value. It's for those who can turn around issues.